Hello and a very good evening to everyone. I welcome you all for the day 2 session on the topic key to GitHub. Today our speaker Julius will be giving you all insights and a hands on experience on GitHub. I hope you all have downloaded and installed Git and GitHub desktop software and also the VS Code installer. Please reply yes or no in the chat box. Okay, so we will move ahead with the session. I request the speaker to take over the session. Over to you, Julius. Yeah, thanks, Ankita. Um, good evening, everyone. Oh, could I share the screen, please? Thank you. So um, I'm glad to see everyone here. Hope you had a Lovely time since we last met, and I hope you, um, some of you have said you'll have installed Git and GitHub. So I hope in addition to doing that, you had some chance at at least um, sharing, uh, experimenting a little with it. So today's session is going to be a very hands-on, very interactive. So if during any point of it, you'll have any questions, feel free to type it in the chat. I have it open at the side here. Um, so don't worry about interrupting. Today it's meant to be very interactive today. Uh, I can see many of you all installed it. Uh, just as a show of hands, is there anyone who has not installed it? Uh, because right now on my system, I completely uninstalled it. So if anyone's not installed it, we'll go through together and I'll tell you how to go about the installer's configuration. Okay, I don't see any no's. So does that mean no, everyone's done installing it? Last call to anyone who hasn't installed Git and GitHub on their systems. Okay, seems like everyone's installed it. Okay, so let's go ahead then. So just a roadmap of what we're going to do today in today's session. Uh, today is going to be hands-on and we're going to deal more with GitHub than with just local Git repositories in today's session. So we're going to start off with uh, initializing a couple of GitHub repositories. And I'll showcase this on my system and you guys follow along. And if you'll have anything, any problems, again, put them in the chat. I've got to open at the side here. And we're basically going to try and recreate what we did yesterday. There's three main operations that you need with Git. Committing the timeline, making the checkpoints, branching off to build different branches or different timelines, and then merging timelines together so that you get all the different changes into one coherent file. So that's what we'll be doing. And after that, we'll sort of have a practice session of the same thing. But instead of doing this completely online on GitHub, we'll now be doing it on a local repo. And then we'll try an another thing where I will make a project and you guys can fork that project and do changes there and then file a pull request. Mm -hmm. That last one is what you normally be doing if you want to, or this last one, local fork, that's what you'll normally be doing if you want to contribute to someone else's project. So we'll be going through all these three steps. Right, so let me open up Git on something. Has anyone here made a GitHub account? Uh, that's quite important for today's session. So let's see. Okay. Okay. I'm going to share my nice little Git window. Where does it go? Uh, 
Uh, can you guys see my Git window? I don't think you can. Let me just uh, figure out what it. Uh, can someone confirm that you can see what I'm doing right now that I'm on GitHub? Yes. Okay. Right. Um. So does everyone here have a Git account? A GitHub account? We can't really move on until you've got one set up. You need time to set it up. Um. Then we'll wait for a couple of minutes. Doesn't take very long. Is there anyone who doesn't have a GitHub account yet? Okay, I only say yes, I have GitHub accounts. So everyone's on the same page, right? Okay, cool. So let's continue then. Um, are you guys logged into your GitHub accounts and I have it open in front of you? Right. So uh, when you log in, do you see something similar to this or is it something very different for a brand new GitHub account? Uh, okay, it doesn't matter. Um, when you want to create a new repository on GitHub, uh, like how we did yesterday, where we went to file and create a new Git repository in our GitHub desktop browser, or in the terminal where we made a new folder and typed in Git in it. In GitHub, it's quite easy. Up here in the top uh, left corner, you'll see the new, and you can make a new repository. Or a better shortcut way of doing the same thing is just typing repo.new in your browser. And hitting enter that opens the very the, the same page GitHub bought this nice domain to make it very convenient for us so again create a repository either click on the plus button or here yeah, and then hit new repository or go to a new window and type in repo.new now just say yes or give me some sort of affirmation once you guys reach the screen Okay, so now a couple of things we need to know. We see this almost the same op options like we had last time. Repository name is, as we'd suggest, repository name. Yesterday we created one called call script demo, and then later created one called terminal demo as well. So for today's thing, uh, let's do something similar. But instead of making the whole tea recipe, let's make a, a zoo inventory, right? So we're going to keep track of, uh, of uh, whatever's in our zoo. So we're going to make a lot of lists of animals and maybe different departments. Each department's its own file, and within those files, we have a list of animals that those departments store. So I'm going to call this a simple zoo thing. And just so people on GitHub don't think I'm crazy, I'm going to give it a nice description. So um, this is a GitHub feature showcase. Uh, do... OK, if you want to do it on a GitHub desktop version, you can. Uh, but since I'm going to be doing it on the web version first. I think it's better you follow along with how I'm doing it. The desktop version is essentially the same thing and then you'll have to push it to GitHub. Just, uh, if you can do it from the web version, it ends up being the same thing, but you'll at least have me following along. And if something goes wrong, it'll be easier for me also to help you out. So just give yourself, give your repository a nice name. You can call it whatever you'd like. So if you don't want to follow along with a zoo like I do, maybe you want to follow along with something else, you're free to do that. Um, you can give it a description that's optional. Um, and make sure for now that it's public, okay? Because we'll be using some features of GitHub that are only available to public repositories, not to private ones. But the difference between this is obviously on a public one, anyone can see whatever you do to it. On a private one, only you can see. Um, but private one has some features locked down unless you're a paid user for GitHub. And don't worry about any of these things. We don't want to read me right now. Uh, we don't want to get ignored and we don't definitely don't want a license right now. Right. 
and wait. So once everything is done, okay, go ahead and click create. Um, I'm going to wait till everyone clicks create just because in case someone runs into any issues, I can show again what we're supposed to do. So once you click, uh, hit create, just click, give me a yes or a done or an okay in the chat. So to recap, type in your name, give it a description if you want, public repository, very important, and then hit create. Okay, two people done so far. Let's wait for the third one and then we'll go ahead. Brilliant, okay. So once you're done creating the repository, you'll see something of this sort. Right. Um, and now, in reality, like if this was a, a real project, you could we would be doing this um, within from a desktop. So we'd be downloading this Git repository to our computers, doing whatever projects we want with it, and then uploading it back again. Uh, but just to showcase what GitHub can do, and to make and to make sure everyone's on the same level, in case some installer problems went on, we'll do everything right now entirely from GitHub. So up here, you should be able to see create a new file, right? So go ahead and click that. And once you do it, you should get a, uh, a text editor. Now, uh, since this is our zoo, each file is going to be one department within our zoo. So let's just say this is our main uh, our tourist section. It's a, it's a general department, so to speak. This is where we keep all the animals and we, it, we list down all the animals that are there. So any suggestions for what animals you should put in a zoo? Like that are the obvious ones. We can have an elephant. Um, maybe we say this is an exotic zoo. We have a kangaroo as well. Um, are ants kept in zoos? Eh, let's say they are. Oh, a tiger, panda. Okay, five seems really nice for now. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll add more later on. So keep adding suggestions. Now, once we've done this, so this is our file. And now we want to make a save point. Now in Git, when you're editing on Git, uh, you can't really make separate saves and then after all of it is done, make one big save point. You sort of have to do it all together. That's just the disadvantage of working online. But this is fine for now. So for now, what we're going to do is add our first animals. This is the name of the checkpoint we want. Uh, no need for description right now. And once that's done, commit your files. Okay. Let me know once you've committed your file and I'll show you something. We'll add some more animals after that. So add a couple of animals and give it a description and then hit commit and then tell me whether you're not you're done. If you run into problems at this point also, let me know. If like something pops up after you hit commit new file, let me know. Okay. We got two dance in the chat. Let's wait for one more and then we cut me. All right. So commit new file. And we have our first tourist section of our zoo. And if you click on it, you can see that there are multiple animals there. Uh, now let's say we want to add a couple of more animals. Right? We can in GitHub just go ahead and click on this edit file icon here. And that will open up the same text editor that we had. And we can add some new, add some new animals. Okay, what suggestions do we have this time? Maybe let's add some some penguins, some sea animals. This penguins, uh, maybe uh, an octopus. Anything else you guys think we should add? Humans. Ah, uh, so so I have I have something clever at the end of the session to do with humans. So let's keep humans on hold for now. Okay. It's a very clever idea, though. How about a bird? A dog. OK, fine, a dog. You can add as many more as you want. And give it a comment message. And then comment that. And I'll add some more animals for now at the end of the list. Give it a comment message. Click comment. And then let me know when you're done. And then I'll show you or why I wanted to do this whole thing on GitHub in the first place. Okay, we got one done. 
Let's wait for three before moving on. How did you reach the text editor? Right. Um, let me open this in a new tab. Ah, okay. The recording interface is coming in the way of me switching tabs. Right. So when you're on this place, right, click on the file that you want to edit and then go to this little icon here that says edit this file and that will open the text editor. Did it reach that button? Okay, so you're done. You made your files right uh, and you hit commit as well. Right, so anyone who's lagging behind, made the animals, give yourself a comment message and then hit comment. Right, so now let's recap what we just did, right? So we made we made an initial file, right? We made a repository. We added a file to it. So we added a file to a tourist department of the zoo. We added some animals and then we added some more animals. So basically what we have right now are two checkpoints. So GitHub gives you a nice way of visualizing this. Um, so just like yesterday, we can check out the, the history that was there. Uh, but not here. So you can see that we have these two checkpoints here, right? This is similar to what we had done yesterday, what you could see in GitHub, in the GitHub desktop interface, and also in Git log in the terminal. But on GitHub, if you go to insights and then go to network, so insights and then network, you'll see a nice little graph we are doing it. So we have one checkpoint here and another checkpoint here. Now, as we add more things to it, it'll keep adding more checkpoints here. So like a railway track. So one, two, three, four in one line. Okay. So let, let's do another one just to show, show what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead there. You don't have to follow along this step. This is just to show, but you're welcome to do so. And I'm going to add a couple of birds to this, to our tourist section. So I'm going to add a parrot and I'm going to add hmm, an eagle. Add a couple of birds and I'm going to commit this directly to the main branch. And this is the very important part. The reason it's in a straight line is because we haven't moved from a current timeline yet. We are still on the same branch. Come and chase it. Oh, and don't worry if this is called something else for you guys. Okay. Uh, there used to be a thing where this main branch that we're dealing with used to be called the master branch. Uh, but then because of recent activities, master can be kind of insensitive a term. So main is the now new default. So I added one more comment where I added a couple of birds. And if I go to network, you'll see it's showed me another railway station along my entire railway track. Now let's say to our zoo, we wanted to do an experimental feature, right? Like you're not really sure that this would work. So we don't want to add it to our main project line, but we don't want to ditch the idea either. We want to sort of branch it out, like make an alternate timeline. So let's say we want to add so someone suggested humans, which was a good idea. But uh, but let's say for now um, that to this list, right? We wanted to add some some rather extinct animals. So let, let's say we wanted to open a sort of Jurassic Park out of nowhere. So so we added say uh, a T Rex. If we don't want to add this now directly to a zoo. There are certain safety concerns we need to do. So when we add it here. Right, so add a dino. We don't want to commit this directly to master. This is a very experimental feature. We haven't tested it out yet, right? Adding dinosaurs, you don't just add that without thinking about it. So what we do is we create a branch and we will call this an extreme experience. Is that the spelling of experience or not? Sure. Uh, so we're now creating a new branch where we've added dinosaurs and let's try to pull that set up. As, as well to that. So we've added two dinosaurs um, to our zoo, but this is not our main zoo yet. This is like a, this is still a very experimental version of our zoo. 
So it's not the one people are going to see. So if this was a piece of software, uh, and then it gives us the open pull request thing. Is everyone still here with me? If you come to this open pull request thing, just ignore it. Go click back on code. So just to showcase what I did, I went to tourist. I added the I added a couple of dinosaurs. Don't worry because you can't see them here, but I added a couple of dinosaurs. And instead of committing directly to me, I said commit to a new branch. And then I hit commit. Did everyone get to that point? Is someone lost somewhere? Go here, add a couple of experimental things. You might even add ice cream. Um, this is not an animal, so. And then say create a new branch, give it a different name, maybe experiment. And then say proposal changes. So, so far only one person's done. Wait for a couple of more people to say yes. Okay, cool. So right now, so uh, if you came up to any pop up regarding submit a pull request or anything, ignore that change. Just click back on code so you're back at the main thing here, right? So once you're at the main thing here, go ahead and click on this file again. And uh, you'll notice that the animals that we had added aren't there in the row. Like we, we talked about yesterday, this is the animals we added are on a different timeline. So this was an actual project and someone wanted to download your piece of software. They wouldn't see any experimental changes in the main branch. The main branch is like the holy grail. It's reserved only, it's reserved only for uh, the features that are guaranteed to work, right? All the experimental features, when you click on branch here, they are on the other thing. So the dinosaurs I added on the extreme experience branch. So when I switch to that, you can see the dinosaurs are now in this code file. Right, you have a question. I did once like the alternate plan then. And when I clicked it again, the update was not there. Yeah. So make sure the you're on the right branch. So when you're on the main branch, which is what everyone's supposed to see, things might you'll see the version that's working. So this is the version of the zoo that we are we are working. This is guaranteed safe for the public. This version of the zoo is not safe for the public. It still needs to go to a lot more testing, has dinosaurs in it. Right, so does this make sense to everyone? We have two different versions of the zoos. And if we go to the whole network thing that I was talking about, right, so under insights and network, in addition to a straight railway track, you can see this blue thing that's also coming out. Yeah, that's because we branched out that place. So there were three main updates to our main branch. And then there was an other update, which isn't part of the main branch. It's sort of, a, it's sort of branched off from our main branch. So it's not part over here, it's it's right now over here. Make sense to everyone? Does someone need any clarification? Let, let me know any comments if you if you need any help or if you're feeling suddenly amazed by whatever is done. Okay, cool. No comments. Let's uh when I assume that means everyone's on the same page here. Now let's say we finally decided that it was time for us to add our dinosaurs to our main zoo, that we passed everything and we are now Jurassic Park compliant. So that is where the entire pull request things comes in. And uh, GitHub's intelligent enough, it keeps, uh, it keeps saying compare and pull request because it knows that at some point we want to pull request. Uh, but let's let's not go here. Okay? Let's let's just do it on our own, just to showcase how you would do it if, in case this message didn't pop up. So what we want is to our main branch, we want to add the dinosaur branch, the extreme experience one. And you can see GitHub's nicely saying here we are able to merge things automatically. And these are basically the changes that we've done through the existing animals. We now have dinosaurs added to the group. So go ahead there, go to pull request, create a new pull request, 
and then you go to add extreme experience to a main branch. And once that's done, say create a new pull request. Click this button once that's done. And then let me know also. Is everyone done here? Have you created the pull request and then click this green button? Okay, Arvind having some trouble. But do you need help, Arvind, or do you have it under under control? You stuck somewhere? All right. Um, which part do you like? Would you like me to show you again from? Just the pull request part, or actually making the whole new branch? Okay, the pull request part. So this is your main screen, right? Code. This is the thing here. So from code, you want to go ahead to pull requests. This is where you do all the merging between different timelines, branches in Git. And then you want to click this button, new pull request. If this shows up, you can click it, you get to the same screen. It will automatically set it up. But just for practice now, click the new pull request button. From here, what you want to do is, you can see this arrow is basically saying, what do you want to merge into what? So we want to take our dinosaur branch, extreme experience, and then merge it to the main branch. That's what you got to do. And once that's done, you can say create a new pull request. And since we didn't edit the same lines, Git has said able to merge. Around 90% of the time, you're going to be able to see able to merge here. The only time Git can't figure out when you can, how to automatically merge something is when you edit the exact same line twice. So like if here we had eagle and then here maybe we put in baby eagles or an American eagle, then um, Git would have trouble knowing which one exactly we should be merging. But if that's not the case, then if they're completely two different files on editor, then Git will automatically know how to merge them. So has everyone done this? You got to pull requests, selected extreme experience, and then say create a pull request. Okay, cool. Arvind's done. Um, Swapnil, are you done? Okay, fine. Brilliant. So once you create the pull request, you're going to see this uh, whole thing. For now, since it's just us, you just say add a dino, and then you click create a pull request. If you are doing this to someone else's project, then please be polite to them and leave a huge description of why exactly you want to merge these two things. For now, just leave it as at the default values. We want to add two dinos and say create a pull request. Now, once that's done, you will see the whole pull request thing, and Git will tell you we can now merge the pull request. So go ahead and do that. Hit the merge button, and then I'll, then I'll show you exactly what Git did behind the scenes. So once you've done that, made a pull request and clicked on this merge pull request button, uh, let me know whether or not you've done, or if you ran into any trouble. Um, yeah. As a little bit of trivia, I'll explain what each of these features mean. So when Git wants to merge two things, right? There are three ways in which it can do it. 
But the default way is to just fast forward everything. Just take whatever changes were there, just apply them directly. And if there are any conflicts, to make a whole new checkpoint. Right? Uh, the squash and merge thing is, well, I'll show you, I'll remind me to show this. Okay, someone asked me about this in the Q&A once we're done here, because you'll need a little bit of context to understand. And rebase and merge get basically, um, let's put this. Yeah, we haven't done enough examples yet for me to actually explain this to you guys. You'll come back to this later once you've done a little more complicated examples. So now click the merge button and then let me know whether or not you've done. Okay, I see a couple of yeses. So that means everyone's merge. So yes, why is this? Merge build request, add to dinos, confirm merge. And Git will tell us, yep, we've successfully merged. We cannot delete the branch. Let's leave it for now. And if we go back to our code and we check our tourist site, right, this is on main, by the way, not the experimental version. This is on our main thing, which is open to people. We can see that our dinosaurs and our T Rex is there. Now, just to show how this looks under the scene, go back to the network thing. And now you'll see exactly what happened. So over here, right, after we added birds, we branched off to an experimental branch where we added two dinosaurs. And then we brought those dinosaurs back. We merged them back to our main branch. Uh, but this was a rather simple case, right? There we did. Uh, yeah, before I explain this, is did everyone is everyone on the same page here? Did everyone understand exactly what happened right now? How uh, things went to law. We came to one point, we had an experimental feature, so we branched off, so we wouldn't affect our main feature. And then once we were sure that this experimental feature would work, we brought it back in. Yeah, brilliant. Now, you might have noticed when we did this experimental feature, we didn't do any work on our main branch. But usually when you're working on software, you will do experimental features, but you will also do work on your main branch. So let's see how Git handles something like that. Right. So let me go to our code base here, right? And we'll add a couple of we'll add a couple of new experimental features. So any suggestions for what animals we should add this time? Let's add some actual sea creatures. So let's say um, as an experiment, let's add a clownfish and a shark. And you know what? Let's 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 put them in some other order this time. Maybe I'll put the clownfish under the panda. And the shark next to the eagle. Okay, and seal. Let's put a seal at the end. Ah, you might have noticed that I keep having this habit of adding a new line at the end of my of my git file. Like I leave a blank line. Um the reason I do that is because when you're dealing with a lot of software that's trying to process data. The way they think of that, the way the software is written is it just expects a new line at the end. So elephant, new line. Okay, kangaroo, new line. Ants ends with a new line. Tiger, new line. So seal should also have a new line at the end. So when you're dealing with a lot of old software, you usually want to add a new line. Uh, this used to be the case with Git as well, where it would really want to add, expect a new line at the end. Now it's patched out, but for me, it's just become a habit. And I like the look of it also. So we've added a couple of sea animals, right? So add aquatic animals as well. And we're gonna make a new branch, just uh, call this just splash. Right, so we're bringing an alternate reality where we've added a clownfish, a shark, and a seal. And these are sort of in between everything. Right, so let's add this in. And yeah, no, no need for a pull request. So if we go back to tourists, we're on our main thing. You won't see any of our shark seals or anything. But just like last time, we got a split splash, the aquatic branch, then we'll see our clownfish, our shark, and a seal. Now instead of directly merging this, let's let's do something extra. Right. Let's um Go to our main branch and add some new animals, which are safe for people to visit. So to this, I'm going to add directly now 
Mm, maybe I'm gonna I'm gonna add this at the start. I'm going to add. Hmm, let me think. I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add some Solana, some big cats. So cheetah. Is that how you spell it? Cheetah. And a lion. And let's add a walrus as well. Another thing. So these are two animals that I've added right now. And these are not experimental. I'm gonna put these directly into my zoo. Right. And I'm gonna commit these to mail. So they're not going in their own branch, they're going on their mail. So if I look back, so on our main branch, we have a cheetah and lion, and we don't have any any of the fishes. But on our splish press branch, we have the fishes, uh, but we don't have the lion and the cheetah. So just to show what exactly is going on here, and this is how you'll probably do development when you start to do it, where you are doing your experimental feature. Uh, and this load now. Right. So we are doing our experimental feature, but we are also continuing with our main development of our of whatever features we already had. So let's just, so right. So unlike last time, where we paused our main development and then worked on our feature and then finally merged it, here we are making our feature, but our, our main development is keeping on going on and on. So let, let's see what happens if we try to merge it right now. So let's go to pull request, just like last time. Yeah, yeah, before I do this, is everyone still on the same page? Everyone with me? Anyone lagging behind? Yeah, so is if give me a done or something if you're if you're here right now. If you made the extra branch and added something to main as well. Okay, one person so far, very good. If you're stuck somewhere or need me to explain anything again, just let me know, I had to type it. Can there be nested branches? Very good question. You know what, let's see that later on. Let's see it soon after this. After this, we'll make a branch and then make another branch from it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so once you made this branch, right? So right now what's happened is we have a branch and um, but our main timeline has also moved ahead. It, it hasn't really paused and waited for us. So let's see what happens when we try to pull merge those two things. Just as like last time, create a pull request. We want to add a splish splash branch to main. And uh, yep, everything looks good. We are adding these three lines to it. Create pull request, and we are creating a new pull request. So once you're here, just hit merge pull request, and it will make sure everything is done properly. Right. Has everyone done the merge pull request thing? Okay, cool. So let's confirm this merge. And once we're done here, let's take a look at what's happened in our network graph. So it was... Mm -hmm. Why is this taking so long for me to do? It used to be so fast. Right. So even though we didn't wait for our main branch to like wait for us to finish everything. Oh, Dritzi didn't wait. wait. Uh, let me know if you're having trouble and you're, you're too stuck around. Am I pronouncing that right? Dritzi. And just let me know. So even though our main branch didn't wait for us to finish testing out our feature completely, it sort of chugged ahead. Git still is smart enough to understand that when we want to merge, everything is in. 
So right now we made a feature where we added dinosaurs, experimental, we put it in. Then we added some um, fishes and those were experimental. But while we were doing that, we also added some tigers and lions and cheetahs. And then once we were sure fishes were stable and a good feature, we added those also to it. So if we go to our code, our main code, we should see everything in. So we see the cheetahs and the lions. We also see the fishes, the clownfish, the shark, and at the very bottom, the seal. Now, so far, it has been doing everything nicely for us. Uh, and that is because we've been editing different lines at the same time. So if in my, can we unmerge a branch? Uh, no, you can't really unmerge a branch. You can undo a commit though. So what you can do, in Git is this, whenever it merges, what it's essentially doing is making its own pull request, right? So this is this is a, its own save point. What you can do is delete these save points. You can just undo them. And that itself will be another save point in its own. So even though this is possible in Git, right? Uh, it does become very messy. So if I go to, let me just show you exactly how you would do it in the, in the rare event that you would want to do it. So if we go to commits here, uh, what we can do here, this merge thing. Mm, there is a call. We can report it. So under pull request, we can undo this merge. Uh, but when you undo the merge, it doesn't sort of really undo it. What it does is it adds another save point where it ignores the same things again. And then things just become very messy to deal with further on the line. If you can avoid doing something like this, then try as much as you can to avoid it. But in case you do fall into that loophole, then reverting it is, is possible. So let me just break this and show you exactly what happens. So if we were to click revert, you don't need to do this on your own repo, by the way. It's just because it becomes messy. Just when you do click revert, right? What's going to happen in our main code is um, what exactly got reported? I did click revert on the right one, correct? Oh yeah, so I did say revert. I didn't. I didn't actually do this. Yeah. So when you click revert, basically what it's doing is it's adding another merge request. Uh, this merge request sort of has this is this is just like another merge request, but it doesn't have the information from our split splash. So it's just uh, un it's like um, writing or overwriting on top of it. It's not really undoing anything. So when you do click confirm this merge, um, in my main thing in the zoo, I won't see any of my clownfish or anything. And in fact, if I go back to my network, that was a very nice question. Uh, why is it not showing anything? It should show. Okay, this should show an other thing up here in front. I think this is just lagging behind right now. Um, but what we did right now is we made this main thing and then to it, we added an other merge commit. So there should be another checkpoint here. This network graph has a notorious history of lagging behind things. So let me just show you in our commit history. So we merged a pull request from uh, get thing. So that is there in our history. And then we didn't really delete this. All we did is basically overwrite it with something else. So even when you sort of unmerge something, you, you never really undo anything in Git. Git doesn't let you undo things ever. That's just part of its philosophy. Even when you delete files, Git will still remember what those files were. So you can undelete them. It's very clever that way. All it prefers doing is it merges. So it just follows this philosophy of never delete, always add information. So if you need something to you just override saying it was never there in the first place. So there was another interesting question. What can you branch a branch? So, so let's do it again. Um, just to make sure everyone here is on the same. So just let me know, did you guys actually go ahead and report the thing? Did you all unmerge or um, did you all decide to keep it merged? Okay, good. So let me get up to speed. I'll merge myself back in again. Uh, let me open a new pull request. Then I want to add split splash. 
there isn't anything to compare. Yeah, see, so this is why things start getting a little bit uh, bit complicated. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to report my reported merge. This is what I meant when I said things start getting really, really messy. Like if you decide you want to revert your revert, if you want to like merge back your unmerge, uh, then you're going to have a lot of complicated stuff to deal with. All right, I'm just going to delete these unnecessary branches that this created. So right now I'm on the same page as everyone else. I'm just doing a bit of cleanup where I'm deleting some of the automatic branches that get creates whenever you say, uh, say you want to unmerge something. So now I'm on the same page as everyone else. I have my main branch, I have the dinosaur one, and I have the fish one. And uh, in our tourist thing, you know, this is our main thing right now, not experimental. We have the lions, we have our first basic animals, and we also have our fishes. So everyone, we're on the same page right now. Everyone's with me. Is anyone sort of lacking behind? Let's let's move on to the, the next experiment. There's someone wanted to branch off of another branch. Okay, no one seems to be lagging behind, so let's do this. Um, let's go to our tourist file and we'll add some, some more animals. Um, this time what we'll do is we'll add a couple of, um, let me think. We got seals in, so why not add some uh, sea lions? And uh, maybe we can add some actual, say an aardvark. And we have an ant. So let's add an ant eater as well. Or an pangolin. So we've added some new animals and I'm going to add these to their own branch. Now, since it's an experiment, you guys don't need to follow along with this. But you know, it's good. It's nice and good to experiment. There's not really much you can break. Oh, I accidentally asked for a pull request as well. Oh, never mind. I'm going to close this. So now I've added this nice new branchy branch thing, which we are going to experiment off and see what happens when we create a branch from a branch. So we have a branch here, and we're going to try to create another branch from this. So from a uh, branchy branch, we are going to add some new animals. So in addition to the arbok, let's add a gold and a fox as well. And we'll make a new branch from this. Uh, man, they're technically dog family. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so let's see what's happened on that graph. So we had a main branch. We've added another branch, and then to that we've added yet another branch. Right, so uh, this isn't showing things very well. What this should have shown is an actual branch that comes out again one more step here. So Git is also decentralized in a way that it doesn't really care that this main branch is a main branch. At any point of time, you could just assume, you know what, this new green branch, that's going to be a main branch. And some projects actually do that. Things get so messed up on the main branch, they start creating another branch and decide to go entirely off that. So right now we made a main branch and then this should show another line coming down and a branch there. So that's a branch of a branch. We can then decide to maybe in a new pull request to a branchy branch 
add our branchy branch branch. So this is the branch of that branch. Yep, you can merge you can merge branchy branch with main if you'd like. And then you can later on branch branchy branch branch with main. You can do these in any order you want. It doesn't really care. Um, but just just to so okay, so okay, so how would you like it to happen? Right now, my plan is to branch branchy branch branch back to its branchy branch and then branch the, the, the whole back thing, merge that back into main. Does anyone want to do it in a different order and see what will happen? Okay, so let's do it this way then. So what I've set up here is the branch of a branch is going to branch into the branch. So this is going to branch into this. It's going to merge into this, sorry. So let's merge that. Um, settings. Network, show you what's happened. Yeah, see, I, I don't understand why it's doing this. So this should have come in from maybe down here. That would be easier to show you guys. It's just weird how this is actually showing it. Uh, so right now, both uh, the change that we made to a branchy branch branch is now on our branchy branch. And I should have chosen better names so that it's difficult to start saying this so fast. So basically, the on branchy branch, the wolf and the fox that I added before are also there in addition to the aardvark and the pangolin. So now, just like before, if I wanted, I could merge this whole thing back together so that everything is in our main zoo file. So all the animals are currently here, and I can merge them together. So create pull request. Right. So now actually we have enough uh, context for me to explain what these these things actually do. So uh, in our main file, right? So currently in this this branch that we have, there are two updates to it. There are two checkpoints. So the default version thing that we do is just take those checkpoints and directly apply them. So if we click right now and we click apply, everything would just be added. So to the graph, we would see two new railway stations there. The second option is to squash everything and put it in. So that takes everything from the branch, makes, makes it as if it was just one checkpoint, and then adds it. And this can be very useful if, for example, you're making a new feature to your program. And while testing out that feature, you have a lot of checkpoints within it. But you don't really want those checkpoints to come in your main feature. You just want the main history to say you added this feature. So in cases like those, you might want to squash and merge it. Or, may, or maybe you actually want to see all the history. There is really no right answer here. Different teams and different organizations use different things. The rebase and merge thing is what happens. Like you remember in the second example, we didn't pause our main branch to actually make sure everything comes together. We sort of just let the main branch continue with its development while we tested our feature. So what Git did then, was it it took one change so the main branches changed whatever it was already doing and then took uh, the change that we had done on a new branch and then made a merge request with rebase what it does is right from the point where uh, we split off it takes all the new changes in the main branch right so it takes all those main let me go back to the graph here and show you so from the point where we split off, so from here, if we had decided to do rebase, it would take this change, drag and drop it in front of here, and then merge. That's how it would do it. It's but the branch second. Yeah, I'm guessing something is maybe wrong with the browser also. It gets kind of weird, JavaScript and HTML. So let, let me recap those three things. So uh, the default version is to take both of these, and just add them both here, one and two. So this thing just takes drag and drop and goes here. So these two, one would drag and drop it onto our main timeline. The compress then merge the, what, I can't remember the exact term, but basically what it'll do is it'll take both of these, 
put them in together and then then add them here the third option rebase suppose this branch was a head instead of doing what we did here with the blue thing adding it directly here it would take this add it before and then merge it so that you know you could get a slightly different result depending on how it merges. Sometimes you might end up with merge conflicts. So far, we've been dealing with something very simple. So Git has been you know very easily figuring out what we want to do. This is not always the case. Sometimes Git might have a hard time. So depending on how you want things to be, you might choose a different strategy. For now, when you're just starting out, don't worry about it. The the default merge thing will work. It'll just work. But later on, as you start growing, you might figure out you like some things better than others. Usually when I like merging projects, I like doing the third option rebase first. For me, it's just something I like doing. There's not really a right answer or wrong answer. Right. We've actually spent a, a lot of time. One hour is already up. And uh, basically, you've seen exactly how to do things with, um, with Git on GitHub. Right. So let's try and doing the same thing now uh, on on our code, so on our desktop. Um, is anyone getting late or something? We've already crossed our one hour time limit. So I'll try to make this second bit quick. Um, just let me know now, how do you want to do this? Do you want to do this from GitHub desktop or do you want to do this via the terminal? Just type it in. In the meantime, I will install the two. I had uninstalled them yesterday. Okay, we have one vote for terminal. Do we have anything else? VS code, can we use VS code? Okay, so we have we have one vote for each of them. Uh, you know what, I'll, I'll do the most obvious thing. I will show you. Okay, yeah, fine, fine. We, we can do it, don't worry, don't worry. I'm more than happy to show you guys how to actually do this. So someone wants GitHub desktop, someone wants the terminal, and someone wants VS Code. So do we have anyone to break the tie? You change your vote to VS Code. OK, so we have one for terminal and two for VS Code. Brilliant, OK. So I will show you. I'll show you some examples in VS Code, and I'll show you one example in terminal. Right. Let me just go ahead and install Git. So uh, does everyone have the terminal thing installed? Everyone has um, the Git terminal installed, right? Let me just share the installer right now. So everyone has this installed, right? When you did, what did you select your terminal as? You can, you can do any of them, all of them are good. I'm going to, for now, say Visual Studio Code. And I'm going to set this to be the defaults are fine. Uh, this is just because uh, default, default, default. I'm going to go with defaults. Uh, yeah, you can use VS Code. Don't, don't, yeah, okay. If you use next, 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 or uh, then I, then I might as well show you how to work on Vim. So Vim is a very powerful editor and. If you really want to get into like hardcore programming, definitely something worth learning. Um, but the problem with it is it also starts getting complicated to some people. Uh, like it is, it is extremely powerful, but it is also extremely simplistic. And I'll show you what that means later on. It are like actual jokes in the in the developer community. Where the most complicated thing about Vim is how to exit it because there is no button or any command per se. So let this install and uh, I'll open the same thing in VS Code and I'll show you how to do it. So we'll do this in a mixture of uh, terminal and VS Code, which so happens to be exactly how I like to work. So let's launch git bash. So once you're done, just open up VS Code. And don't open up VS Code yet. Uh, just open up git bash. So go to your you know, wherever you installed that in, in the start menu and open it up. And then you should see something like, let me share this. Yeah, you should see something like this. 
So once everyone's done here, let just type in a done or something. Let me know you are you reached here, and I'll tell you what the command is to download your project. Okay. Once you open, anyone having trouble opening Git Bash? It should be in your start menu. If you just installed it, you know, Windows keeps it wherever it needs to keep it. Right. So the command to actually get GitHub makes this very easy. You just click on the code button here in Git. So under the main, click on code here. And then on the green code button, Git lets you say how you'd like to think, how you'd like to get what you want. So click on HTTPS for now and then copy this URL. Once that's done, so once you have this URL, the, the go to a folder where you want to save things. So I'm going to save that in my documents folder. Uh, you can go to any folder you'd like. Okay. So, oh yes, let me explain this. So LS lets you look at whatever is in your current folder. CD lets you change your folder. So you type in the folder names and that's how it works. If you're having trouble doing that, just leave it wherever it's default. It doesn't really matter. If you want to know which exact folder it's going in, type in explorer.exe and let it start up there and it'll open up a, it'll open this up, your explorer. So once you've selected a folder that you want, or you've kept it in the default folder, the, com the, the command to download things with Git, everything starts with a Git. What you want to do is you want to clone the repository and then the URL to clone it from. To get the URL, like I said, click on the code button, HTTPS, and then get this URL, copy it. And just paste that in. Once that's done, just click on enter and it will download everything in. So let me know once you've reached this, this stage, okay? Once you've cloned your repository to your local computer. Okay, we have one person who just finished. Is everyone doing? Is it going fine? Anyone stuck somewhere? It won't let me paste it in. Oh yeah, so uh, the terminal is kind of weird. You just, you have to right click to paste it in. That's just how it works. Or if that doesn't work, then control V or control shift V. Those are the other two things that end up happening. Okay, I can't use those because it starts my camera then which won't really transmit anything right now because I'm downloading things from the internet and also streaming. Still won't work. Okay, then just type it in. It's not that complicated a code. It's basically the same thing that comes up here in the browser bar. It's GitHub slash your username and slash zoo. Uh, or whatever you called it. So Jade Maverick is my GitHub username. So if you go to Jade Maverick, com slash Jade Maverick, you'll find my stuff.
So did you manage to do it, Swapnil? Okay, we have two people done so far. Is anyone else having any difficulty? Okay, let's assume everyone's up to speed. If someone has a stuck somewhere, just type it in chat or I'll address you guys. So, uh, if you'd like to know where exactly you save, like you don't know, type in explorer.exe and then a dot. The dot means in the current folder. So it will open explorer.exe in the current folder. And then explorer.explorer.exe. Uh, and then you'll be able to see exactly which folder it saved it in. So for me, that's on another hard drive in my documents folder. Can we get bash in a directory directly? Yeah, so if you decided to install it, you can right click and then say git bash here. Uh, I'm not sure if that also gets shared. Can you see this context menu? Yeah, so git bash here, you can do that as well. And then type in the command. I should have probably made you guys do that first, my bad, my bad. So once you know which directory you've installed it in, then you can open up VS Code. So right click, open VS Code, or you know, open Visual Studio Code, and then open the folder. So if you right click and do it, open VS Code, it will automatically open up the folder. So uh, do you guys know how to use uh, Visual Studio Code, or is this also something that's completely new to you guys? It's it's basically uh, a glorified notepad. You have a bunch of folders here. Oh, I opened up the wrong folder. Okay, this is a good example for me to show you. So either you go to the, the folder which you just downloaded, the zoo folder with a one file, right click and click open Visual Studio Code. Or in Visual Studio Code, you click open folder. And then you open whatever you want to do. So this folder basically for me. Right, and then you'll see the one file we have here. Now, Visual Studio Code is just like Notepad. You can use one file, you can add another file. So let's add maybe the snakes department. And you can add additional stuff to it. So be a Cobra, in Cobra, Control, So it's just a text editor, but you can add a lot of extensions. Now, the good thing about Visual Studio Code is it comes inbuilt with Git stuff. Now, you need Git obviously installed somewhere else on your, on your system. But once that figures out, Git uh, Visual Studio Code is nice and it identifies changes. Oh, wait, wait. I just realized I'm not exactly I'm not sharing Git Visual Studio Code. Oh, I am. Okay, good, good, good. You can see my Visual Studio Code, right? So have you guys reached here yet? Have you opened up Visual Studio Code? Don't worry about these files I just made. I'll delete them anyways. Hello? Where have you guys reached? Right. So once you're here in Visual Studio Code, right, let me just delete this file. It's just like a text editor. So just how we did on GitHub's own thing, we can also add additional things here. So let's maybe add a dog and a cat. 
but when we save just like notepad it doesn't necessarily make a checkpoint now here visual studio code tells us you modified this file and if we go over here there are three there are different panels here right there's the in visual studio code there's the main panel here which shows you all the files that are in your folder there's a search panel in case you want to search for things in large code bases and then there's the git panel there's also a debug and an extension panel and some remote thing which i've never used at all so in git you'll see all the changes that you've made and visual studio will nicely place it side by side to tell you this is the original file you just added two new files and then that additional one extra line was always there at the start to begin with so do something like this and once that's done right once you added a couple of changes you can add them anywhere in the file that you like click on the plus icon here in visual studio code so this stages the changes and i'll explain what the stage means we didn't really go over it in github but we can see it now So once you're done and you save the changes, let me know. In the meanwhile, I'll explain what this means. So when you make a change, right, in GitHub, uh, in Git to a code, to a file, it becomes modified. When you make something modified, Git uh, knows that you, you changed something within the file, but it doesn't remember what those changes were. When you add something to staged, now Git remembers what the changes are, but it doesn't save the changes. It doesn't make a checkpoint. It just remembers what the changes are. So if you make an other change to this file, so in addition to this, maybe I add rat. Well, then Git, Git remembered the stage change, but it also now knows that you have an extra change here, rat. Now, once you want to make a save point, Git takes all the files that were changed, staged, not the changes, whatever was staged and remembers, and then it makes an additional thing. So I can now say add household animals. And whatever was changed, get added that. But it didn't, but unless you state something, it's not going to add it into the checkpoint. It's going to remember that you, it's going to identify that you changed it, right? That is what modified means. Staged means Git remembers that you've staged it, that you've changed it, and then committing it, which means clicking this plus icon after typing a message, means Git makes a checkpoint for that those changes. So here I'm also going to say add woman. So this is my message, and then I'm going to click plus to commit that message. Oh uh, yeah, first you've got to stage them. So it remembers the change, and now we make a checkpoint with it. Now, uh, if you wanted in Git, right? If you want to make a new branch, it, oh, is everyone up to speed here? Don't want to jump ahead. Did everyone manage to add some extra changes and then commit those changes within code? Anyone else manage? Let's wait for another person. If you ever need to see what your changes were, uh, get Git by uh, Visual Studio Code by default doesn't really show you any extra information. Uh, there are extensions you can get. Uh, one is this Git Lens Supercharge extension. Highly recommend getting that one. Um, since this is my brother's laptop, I'm not really going to make changes that he doesn't want. But this is a very good extension that helps you get extra features from Git that Visual Studio doesn't show you by default. Now, if you wanted to see the changes that we made, let me know when you guys have reached. Okay, I'll move on. Right now, I'm just giving some extra information for those who finished. If you want to see the changes that you made, the history, go over to the Git terminal and then type in Git log. So this will give you a log of all the changes that we saw. Oh, this is 
yeah you need to move to that directory so zoo change directory to zoo and then git log so now git has showing me every single thing that i worked on so we just added the woman before that i had added household friends and you know we merged branchy branch and add the dogs and cats the wolf and the fox before that as well so at any time right if you ever see these two prompts but the, the colon here and you want to quit press q and it will stop showing you whatever it has to show so this is just uh, this isn't something to do with git whenever you're working on a terminal if you see long prompts like this and you need to exit from them press the q button now uh, i do the same thing and just show you the short versions the one line version you can see the same thing you, you'll see these these things here with saying head main origin head origin branchy branch oh, well this is what we have on our local computer right now so this is our local repository the head and this is main on github which is our original repository our main and head are here so these two changes that we added beyond this haven't been uploaded to github yet so i'll show you how to upload those as well actually you have to upload it from here the from the terminal and then i'll tell you how to upload it from this from studio code uh, but before we do that let's now figure out i'll show you how to do branches as well so branches um do i show you this in visual studio code or yeah you know i'll show you in visual studio code so when you want to make a branch in visual studio code you click this button here so bottom left the main that says that's where on the main branch right now you can see all the other branches as well here we are going to create a new branch and in here we are going to add our extreme of as so right now we are on a whole new branch extreme files we also have a main branch and the other ones from github as well those also got downloaded to this we're going to add a cockroach this is an extreme of as branch so you can see that it get nice it gives in an asterisk here that says this change is now on we have made a change but this change hasn't been saved anywhere like if we go to our main branch that change is still going to be there it hasn't been assigned to any branch per se so we want to assign this change to our extremo files branch so just like before stage the change make sure you're on the right branch and then save add another one and now github has made a git has made a checkpoint in this branch so we have cockroach in our extremo files branch but if we go to main you won't see that cockroach anymore it's not there now if you want to change branches in the terminal the way to do it is checkout so the command for that is checkout so git checkout extremo files will switch to this branch and then get here with you can see we can see the cockroach here if we move to main so get check out the main branch the cockroach disappears so git and vs code work very well together they automatically sync now we want to merge things together so to do that we do this from the command line as far as i know git does uh yeah we can do this from here but i want i'm going to show you how to do it from the command line this one the exact same things work on uh, VS Code as well. So when you want to merge a branch, you make sure you're on the main branch. So the branch you want to merge to, and then you say git merge extremo files. So I want to get the cockroach from extremo files into my main branch. So I merge them together. And get will do the same thing. And we now have a cockroach. So this is in main. So our cockroach was in extremo files, and our cockroach is also in main. From VS Code, if you wanted to do it, you click this menu here and it gives you all the other options so to commit things to undo the commits like we had to do it to stage all the changes like it, in case you don't want to click plus 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 to everything and obviously merge branch so we want to create a branch and just like the options that we had so we want to merge from extremo files into main but really there's no change right now so it won't do anything right do everyone understand till here this is the exact same thing we've done in GitHub. We are now doing on our local copy in VS Code. Everyone with me? Anyone who got lost along the way?
Let me know if you're stuck somewhere. I don't mind repeating anything. Is anyone, um, has anyone like gotten stuck somewhere, have not followed something, commenting in GitHub in a VS Code, for example, or merging it together, or what I did with the whole branches thing? The merging part. Okay. Let's uh, review that again. So where are you stuck right now? What have you done? Have you have you made the change and committed the change? Okay. Uh, let me recreate that then. So I'm on Extremo files. I'm going to add another one. So it's one of them. Right. And I am going to. Make a checkpoint for this one in extreme of files. So stage the change. And also make a save point for the change. So commit the change. And now we have this tardigrade, tardigrade in our extreme files, but not in main. So we want to add this now to main. So make sure we are on main. Right? Click on the sub menu here. And click on branch and then merge branch. Once you click on merge branch, Git will ask you, okay, which branch do you want to merge from? We want to get in the change from extreme profiles. So click on that and it'll merge it together. Right. So this basically covers everything that we've done so far. And these are the basic operations you need to work on something. At every point of time, you are going to make changes. Whatever changes you want to save, you will stage them. So let me just make a double note here. Um, whatever changes are made, you will stage those changes. Whatever you don't want to add to the save point, you don't need to click plus on. And then you add a message and Git will remember them. So I'm going to discard these changes right now. Yes, discount. Now, once everything is done, you need to know how to push things to GitHub. So how this changes that we made here, we can't really see them on GitHub. So if I go to tourists, we don't really see any of the cockroaches and all added. They're not there. So we want to push those changes. So just how we clicked on clone to get changes from GitHub, we need to click on, we need to upload them. So the upload thing is called push. Now, it's very important before you upload, if you're working with other people, to see if someone else updated the GitHub repository online. Otherwise, what will happen is you're going to push changes when you when you don't have the latest version. And then GitHub will say, I don't want your changes. Someone already gave me a more updated version. Update your thing first, and then you push it. So just to just to showcase what that looks like, let's say we are working right now. Right? The command you normally use is git push. And for now, this will work because no one has updated anything. But let's just say on our GitHub, we added something. So we added, for example, say a dolphin. I'm going to leave that as up to tourists. Right. Now this command wouldn't work uh, because when we say git push, and yeah, this git push is the same push that you see up here, can I? Mm. It's the same git push that you see here. Uh, but when we do that, git is going to complain. Mm. This is taking an unusually long amount of time.
Uh, can you guys still see my screen? Okay. Uh, so Git push isn't apparently not working right now. I don't have. Oh, this just thing just froze for me. Let me reopen it. All right, it didn't exactly freeze at all. So let me just reopen that git bash. So git, um, what's it called? Git bash. And then share git bash as well, so you can see what I'm doing. All right. So what we do is we do a git push. And because this is the first time, um, you can't see this, but Git's asking me right now to sign in for my browser. Um, let me share this also to you. It's a different browser. All right. So uh, what I did right now is I opened the terminal and I clicked Git push. It gave me a pop-up saying, please sign in. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to authorize Git so we can upload things to a GitHub account. Okay, I do not know password for this particular one. Let's do this another way. I am going to do Git push. I'm going to do this with Visual Studio Code. Um, if you do know your login details, please visit a login and do it. Now I am going to try a different way of signing in. Copy this into the correct browser. Right. Yeah, and, and now it works. So I tried to git push it, but it failed because there are newer updates on the GitHub repository. So here. So if I actually want, I added the Dolphin, which is not there in VS Code at all. So the good habit before ever git pushing to GitHub is to first git pull. This will get the changes from GitHub to your computer. So this is downloading the new changes. So to do that, and you can see somewhere here, it will add something higher. So this is one of the rare events where GitHub can't figure out what we were doing. And the reason for that is we added dog cat here, but uh, Git says there's a dolphin here as well. So which one do we want? In our cases, we want both changes, uh, but if it was not the case, you could say accept one of them, accept the incoming one. We want to accept both of them, so everything is there. And then save that file. <clears throat> and finally merge it. Let's see what just happened. Uh, um, so don't just don't worry much about what just happened here. So in my case, Git couldn't automatically figure out how to merge things. So I told it exactly how to merge them. And I staged that merge. And now what I've got to do here is say git rebase, then tell it to continue what it was doing before. Yes, I do want to do all this. So. Yeah, that seems right. Yep, and get successfully merged everything. Um, if you ever confused, gets the messages that they give work pretty well. Like I know that 
the first time I encountered this, I knew I had to run git vbs continue because that's what it says here. So just, just read them carefully and you'll figure out what to do. The error messages are pretty self-explanatory. So now we have the latest changes from both um, Git and uh, from GitHub on a local machine. So now once we've done the Git pull, now it's safe to do the Git push. And this will take everything that we have here and upload it online. Yep, and now if we go, it's finished uploading everything. Now if we go here and we reload this, we should see a dog, cat, cockroach, everything here. So that pretty much sums it up. This is how you take a GitHub project from online, do your development work online, offline, and then push it on to GitHub. So you pull things from GitHub to make sure you have the latest version. And once you're done working on it, you push things out to GitHub. Now, if you're collaborating with different people, you would do the exact same thing here, but instead of ever branching it to main on your local copy and then pushing it, you would branch the copies themselves. So let's say I had an experimental change I was working on, right? Um, so over here, let's say I wanted to add Tigress. And this is going to be on a new branch, which I call Okay, this this experimental change, I'm going to put it here. Stay snap. Now, if this was just me working alone, I would add it back to me and then upload that to GitHub. But if I'm working with other people over here, I will never, I won't merge it to me. I won't merge this. If I'm working alone, I'll merge it. But if I'm not working alone, I'll upload this as it is. So now I would say git push, uh, git pull first to make sure no, no other changes are there. In this case, I know there's definitely no other changes. So I'm going to git pull everything. Now it says something is wrong. And the reason for that is there is no tracking information for the current branch. So we made a new branch here, but that branch doesn't exist on GitHub. So we need to make the new branch. So git branch set upstream origin this thing so origin slash gcat is what this is going to be so this is what the branch is going to be called on github this is what we called it here we need to set that up as well again so get sorry get pull to make sure there are no extra changes uh get Pull origin, and I want to cap the she cat branch. Yep, everything seems fine here. All right, I've got to do this command instead, git push. Now I can do git pull. It won't show me any new information. And I can git push everything. I think now if I see over here, I should see ccat somewhere. Why is it giving me trouble? Right, so good. Push set. And now this will push it. Yeah, and it made the new branch. So in addition to everything that we had on GitHub, we now have the SheCat branch. And then like before, I would put in a pull request so people can view it. So a new pull request from our main branch, we want to get the SheCat branch. And create a pull request and leave them a description 
whatever I'm working with, why exactly I'm making a pull request. And that pretty much sums it up. This is all you need to ever get started on GitHub and work with yourself mainly. And that last bit to work with other people. So now, do you have any questions? It's getting kind of late, so. Either type them into the comments or if you Think of something later on if you're into trouble, just ping me up on Twitter. My handle is the same, Julius Alfonso. And I'll get back to you. Yes, this session is recorded and they'll, I believe they'll be making the things on the recordings available. That's up to the host though. Again, if you have any questions, guys, just ping me up on Twitter and I will answer them. Y'all have any questions? You can put in the chat or unmute and tell. I think it was the, the later parts of the thing were a little bit of an overload for everyone. Yeah, like it can get pretty complicated. But if you pick it all this out, this is mostly everything you need to get started with Git. Julius, uh, you'll stop presenting. Yeah, sure, sure. So um, don't worry too much about the overload towards the end. If you got the first half of the session today, that is more than enough to get you started. So the key concepts of how Git works, what the branching and the committing do, those are the main things with Git. Once you figure that out, everything else is much easier to learn. So if you figure out that first session, you managed to follow that along the first one hour, consider yourself a winner for today. Any more questions? So these are the followers on the social media handlers, okay, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. So thank you, Julius. Uh, participants, please fill the feedback form and a quiz link will be shared in the chat box. After answering the quiz, you will be given certificates. Finally, we come at the end of this session. I would like to thank our speaker, Julius, for gracing us today event. Thank you, Julius, for your precious time and making an excellent presentation and making the event interesting. I thank You're participants. Welcome. I thank participants for joining the joining and participating in the event.
I thank uh, Girl Script Goa and my team members helping each other to make this event a great success.